Hey guys, this is Kirk from Go Make Music, and today I'm going to give you four steps to optimize your CPU. This way you can get the most out of your system, and you can have the lowest latency possible when you are tracking. Okay, so the first step is to monitor your CPU. You do that with this readout here, and you can get to that by right-clicking, Customize Control and Display, LCD, Load Meters, and that turns them on. All right. The next thing you, I want you to do is to close all other applications. So your mail, your browser, all that stuff, close it. If you have some kind of cloud service backup, like a Dropbox or a Google Drive, then go ahead and click those and pause the syncing because that can be a real drain on your CPU. It's great for backups, but it's not good while you're working. So pause it while you're working and then once you're done, you can resume it again so that your stuff is backed up. Okay, so that's the first thing. Close outside applications, pause any syncing, and then resume it when you're done. Step two would be to freeze your tracks. Look for the snowflake. If you don't see this snowflake, you can find it by right-clicking the track, go down to track header components, and make sure that freeze is checked and you will see this snowflake appear and it will be gray like this until you click it and then once you hit play it will render an audio file and basically deactivate the processing that's on the channel so if I go to the channel and try to do something it won't let me because it's frozen and you'll see that little icon snowflake I can adjust the levels and the pan I can even add a send on a frozen track, but I cannot adjust the, the actual instrument or any plugins that are directly on the track. But I'm telling you, if you are doing multiple synths or strings or a lot of CPU intensive plugins, then you're going to want to freeze your tracks, especially before you move into live tracking, which brings me to the next step. So in step three, you want to adjust your buffer size and low latency mode to reflect what you are doing in the session at that time. So for live tracking, for example, let's say I made this track with all these different instruments and I've frozen them all so that I can get the most out of my CPU during vocal tracking or during overdubs. So I've frozen all my tracks. Next, I want to go to preferences, audio, and bring my IO buffer size as low as possible without creating dropouts. Now, if you can go to 64 or 32, that's great. A lot of you will not be able to. 128 is a good place to be. And then small on your processor buffer range. Apply those changes and you're good to go. And then even when you do that, you still might experience some latency, uh, which is like a little delay between the sound that you make in the overdub and hearing it back through your headphones or through the speakers. So to get even more lower latency, you will click this button right here. This is low latency mode. It looks like a little speedometer. If you don't see that button, you can just right click in this gray area, customize control and display, and then in modes and functions, you will see low latency mode. Make sure it's checked and then you hit OK. So when you are tracking, let's say you're doing vocals or background vocals or guitar overdubs or whatever, you want this checked and you want your IO buffer size as small as possible. That's in live tracking. If you are in post-production, you're mixing, you're editing, or let's say you're just sequencing with your mouse inside of the DAW. You don't need to worry about latency. So at this point, you can turn that off and you can increase your buffer size as much as possible. So you take it all the way up and you can take your processor buffer range all the way up to large. And that way you get a whole lot more power at your disposal for doing plugins and adding more instruments. Okay, one other word on low latency mode 
is that sometimes you will have um, sends on your tracks. Now, if these are not low latency safe, a lot of times they will turn orange, which means as soon as you try to record, see, as soon as I hit record, all of these plugins will, are not going to work in low latency mode. Now, some of the plugins you just have to deal with them not working, but you can, for your sends, click and hold and make them low latency safe. Okay. So for example, if I have a vocal that I'm recording and I want to send it to a reverb, then I put the reverb on a bus and then I make sure that the send is low latency safe when I'm in low latency mode. Okay, so just want to share that too. Cool. Moving on. Step four is you're going to optimize your plugin usage. Here's what I mean. For example, a lot of my students, I will see them have a reverb on every single channel and a delay on every single channel and an EQ on every single channel. And it really adds up to your CPU usage. So one thing you can do is just to create one reverb. So for example, bus two, what do I got in bus two? Bus two using this plate, okay? Instead of putting a plate reverb on every single vocal, I just send this reverb to bus two and it comes down here and goes here. That is going to optimize my plugin usage. So you might have a couple of different reverbs, a couple of different delays, and just use sends. That's going to save you a whole lot of power. Now I will say there are going to be certain song, certain sounds that you just want to put a reverb straight on. Like this piano right now, I have two reverbs right on it. That's okay here and there if you have the CPU to do it. If not, you might need to set up a bus. Another example of batching your plugins would be things like EQ. So on these guitars, for example, I have like eight guitars and they are all going to bus nine and then bus nine comes up here. It's basically a track stack. And instead of putting an EQ on every single channel, I've just put an EQ on the one track. That saves me a lot of CPU. One final note about the EQ itself in Logic is that you might have this analyzer on. And I'm cool with the analyzer, but it is a CPU hog. So you want to use it and then turn it off and close it. The analyzer hogs your CPU even if this isn't open. So make sure it's off on all your tracks. Okay, so close your outside applications, freeze tracks, adjust your buffer size and low latency mode depending on what you're doing, optimize your plugin usage, and that should get you a lot more mileage out of your system. Let me know if you have any questions about this or if you have any additional methods that you use to keep your CPU happy. If you want more tips and tutorials, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want some free resources, head on over to gomakemusic.org and we have classes on mastering and EQ and gear and music making in general. So we'll see you there. Until next time, go make music.